During D-Day, as the Allies stormed the beaches of Normandy, they were met with machine gun fire and anything the Germans could throw at them to repel their advances. The Allied forces were armed with guns, bazookas and incredibly deadly weapons, but there was one man who stormed the beaches armed with a musical instrument, his trusty bagpipes. William Millen, or Bill Millen, was the personal piper of Simon Fraser, the 15th Lord Lovett, and he is best remembered for playing his pipes under intense fire during the D-Day landings. However, it was said that when the Germans saw him, they did not fire at him, as they thought he was crazy. Join us today as we look at the amazing story of the Piper of Pegasus Bridge, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Bill Millen was born in Canada on the 14th of July 1922. His father was from Scotland and he had moved to Canada. The family then moved back to Scotland when his father worked as a policeman when Bill was free and he went to school in the Shettleston area of Glasgow. Whilst in Scotland he joined the Territorial Army in Fort William after his family moved yet again and whilst here he learned how to play the bagpipes. He played in a pipe band of the Highland Light Infantry and also in the Queen's own Cameron Highlanders. But then he volunteered to train as a commando, and in this he began to train with Lord Lovett in Scotland, with troops of other nationalities. On the 6th of June 1944, Millen was there ready and waiting to land on the Normandy beaches, and he wrote of his day, on that day that would change history forever, D-Day. He said, I went along to the river aboard the landing craft with 21 others, and we went into the leading one, and I had put the pipes in the box. I had been playing to the troops waiting to go aboard the craft, and then I put them in the box, and Lord Lovett said, you better get them out of the box again, because once we set sail by 9.30 or 9 o'clock, you can play us out of the solent. You will be in the landing craft with me. Millen knew he had to pipe the forces onto the Normandy beaches. He played leaving England, and as the landing craft gathered in the solent, you could hear his bagpipes. After they left the Solent they were out at sea, it was cramped in his landing craft, and despite many being violently sick, Millen was fine. As they readied, the men packed their rucksacks and put them on, and picked up their rifles, but Millen grabbed his pipes. Everyone was behaving normally, he said, and he said, I didn't think of being shot, how many Germans there were, what was there, whether the smell of feeling the seasickness was still on me. We all got up on deck, then the order came to get ashore. I was very pleased to get ashore, as no one was shouting that they were afraid. All people really wanted to do was get off. Lord Lovett was in the next ramp, and there were two ramps at the front of the landing craft. Lovett jumped into the water, and then Millen waited until he got in, and then someone came up on the empty ramp, and he was immediately shot. Bill jumped in very quickly after, and his kilt floated to the surface. Rousing himself out of the water, he then began to play his pipes. He said, I struck up the pipes and paddled through the surf, playing Highland Laddie, and Lovett turned around and looked at me. Lovett asked for another tune. When I looked around, the noise and people lying around, shouting, and there was smoke, the crump of mortars. I said to myself, you must be joking. Lovett requested to play The Road to the Isles, and walking up and down the beach, Millin played. He said, just a few feet up on the beach I walked along, I could see people lying down in the water, going forwards and backwards in the surf. Others were trying to dig in just off the beach. When they heard the pipes, some of them stopped. One came along and he called me the mad bastard. Millen was just 21 whilst he was doing this, and he continued to play as his comrades fell around him at Sword Beach. As the Allies pushed forward, they were walking in formation, and Bill continued playing. He was piping along the road, and despite being vulnerable to enemy fire, he continued. The group were then attacked by snipers off the beachhead. He said, I could see this sniper about 100 yards or so away ahead of me. I glanced round and stopped playing, and they were all down on the road, and their faces in the road. Even Lovett was on one knee. Then the next thing, this man came scrambling down the tree, and Lovett and our group dashed forward. I stopped playing by this time. The man's head was bobbing about, the sniper's head was bobbing about in a cornfield, and Lovett shot at him, and he fell down. Lovett had killed him, and then he said to me, Right, Piper, start playing the pipes again. 
Milling continued to say, I was piping blue bonnets over the border at the time. Then a shell hit the church on the left and we all stopped. I looked around and the commandos were throwing grenades in through the windows of the houses. I stopped there at the end of the village and Lovett came up to me and said, Well, we are almost at the bridges, about another half a mile. So start your pipes here and continue along the road and then swing around to your left. Then it's a straight road down the bridges. I started piping but became conscious of snipers by this time. I could see the bridges around 200 yards down the road and a pall of black smoke over the bridges. I kept piping down the road. Lovett was behind me and when I came to the bridges I stopped across the road from a cafe. Then Lovett came to me and said, Right Piper, we are crossing over. So I start walking, put the pipes up. We can hear the shrapnel hitting the sides of the bridge. Bill Milling continued to play across the bridge and he played as the commandos marched across Pegasus Bridge, one of the important points that the Allies had taken. He said, It was the longest bridge I had ever piped across, but I got across safely and shook hands with two airborne chaps in a trench. Then Lovett got across and said to a commando, We are pleased to see you old boy, sorry we are two and a half minutes late. As the Allied soldiers had advanced from Sword Beach to Pegasus Bridge, Bill Millen played his pipes in an iconic image. He had been armed with nothing except his bagpipes and his black knife sheathed in his kilt hose. Whilst men fell around him, including 12 on Pegasus Bridge, as the commandos marched across, Milling continued to play. Captured German snipers would later tell of the bizarre sight of Milling walking across a battlefield playing his pipes, and when asked why they didn't fire at him, they replied that they thought he was mad or crazy. Milling continued to see action in the Netherlands following the D-Day landings, and also in Germany as the war came to an end, but he was demobilised in 1946, and then he went to work on Lovett's Highland estate. He later became a psychiatric nurse in Glasgow, but donated his D-Day bagpipes to the Dawlish Museum. Bill Millen is remembered today and is commemorated as the Piper of Pegasus Bridge. Imagine you are landing on one of the D-Day beaches, and you suddenly hear a piper pushing you on to battle, whilst bullets and mortar fire are crashing all around you. He was an incredibly brave man, and a man who followed the orders of Lord Lovett. The story of the Piper of Pegasus Bridge is an amazing one, and one that should be remembered for centuries to come. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.